Shall we or can we? <laughs> no. I apologize very much for keeping you waiting. There's something, oh, Jim. There's, there's something that sets your schedule back very frequently, but this one was a rather unusual one, so I'll tell you about it this morning. There's Beatitude from Lebanon, Patriarch Antioch. I was brought in by Cardinal Cook this morning, and uh, you don't exactly interrupt. He was uh, telling me the problems of, of Lebanon and so forth, but I thought it was fascinating, and I certainly wasn't going to interrupt when I learned that the man who was talking to me for almost 30 minutes in English had simply learned the language to make this trip. <laughs> and uh, if I were planning a trip to Lebanon, I, <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't duplicate that, but it was fascinating. And uh, very few times that he had to pause and fish for a word and maybe have someone of uh, his group coach him with a word, but he conducted and went forward with this presentation for all that time in English. And I wonder if he forgets it now that he's been here. <laughs> well, I... President has other unique opportunities, and one of those meeting with you who are doing things to make this this country better. I see faces of individuals here, of course, that have already had enormous responsibilities, and yet all of you here are willing to take on a little more in order to to help. The Commission on Executive Exchange is something that. I'm sure you all believe, without my saying it, will pay dividends for years to come by improving the understanding between prime movers of the public and the private sector. And um, I talked to, to those who were in the exchange program uh, yesterday and was telling them that I have had many comments in the past about partnerships between governor, government and the private sector. The trouble with too many of them was that the government always came out as the senior partner and assumed the prerogatives but none of the responsibilities of management. And this is an entirely different kind of partnership, as I'm sure we're all aware. Established as it was in the final year of the Johnson administration when there was a growing alienation between business and the, uh, and the government, or I should turn that around because I think that it was government that had developed a hostile attitude toward its own business community. And uh, this is a means of meeting with that problem. Many executives have gone through the program and gained insights that have been invaluable in overcoming the complexities of a mixed economy. It gives the private sector a chance to get a look at the inside of government, which sometimes isn't completely inspiring. And uh, on the other hand, it gives government executives a chance to uh, get out and see the havoc that can be created even with the best of intentions uh, out in the private sector. I've always felt that the really the best thing that government could do for the private sector is get out of the way of business and industry. That's a little difficult to achieve, so maybe programs like this uh, uh, can take its place and achieve that better understanding. The other hand, uh, to be fair, there are those in private companies who don't fully appreciate uh, the legal responsibilities of government executives. So if we understand the other fellow's job, or as the old Indian said it, if we walk a mile in the other man's moccasins, uh, maybe we'll all come out with more understanding. I know that this program has involved corporations with long-term vision, businesses that know what investment in the future really means. So it gives me a great deal of pleasure to announce that James E. Burt, Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of Johnson & Johnson, will be serving as Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Commission. President. I'm very honored. Thank well, you. Well, I'm pleased that you would do this. Looking forward to working very closely with you and the Commission uh, in this program. So I want all of you, though, to know how deeply grateful I am for, for what you're doing, for the extra involvement that you're willing to engage in here, and now I'm going to step aside and let Justice William Rehnquist proceed with the business at hand, which is swearing in the new members of the commission.
Thank you indeed, Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Burke, if you would place your hand on the Bible as a symbol for the rest, and if all of the rest of you would raise your stand and raise your hand and repeat after me. And uh, 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 use your own name naturally uh, when <laughs> 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 uh, I do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. Well, thank you, Justin Mackwish. Thank you, Mr. Thank President, for letting me participate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. The responsibility you've taken on. And now, I guess if I'm not going to be 15 minutes late for the next, <laughs> I shall let you all proceed, and I will leave you here. But again, a heartfelt thanks. I am a great believer in volunteerism and in what the private sector can bring to government. And you haven't done what I once addressed the executives uh, or the uh, Great at Albert Hall, the great uh, uh, meeting of all the board members of private corporations in the United Kingdom, 6,000 people there, and spoke about, at that time, what we had done in California of involving the private sector. And I happened to use the term that when you do it, send your best uh, uh, to government, not your cast-offs. And afterward, in my presence, an elderly English gentleman said to the chairman, he said, you know, he's right. He said, we don't do that. He says, when, when we send someone to government, we say, oh, good, here's a chance to get rid of old Trubshaw. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't any old Trubshaws here. Thank heaven and thank you all. Thank you.